Good Friday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of your forecast into Friday and beyond. The severe weather threat is over with, gone as of yesterday afternoon. The tornadoes, the severe thunderstorm winds, the hail, everything else, that's history. And as we go into the next couple of days, we're going to be seeing some much nicer get outside and dry out type of weather. So we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. If you've never been here before, again, this is our online video weather blog enabling you to ask questions about the forecast. If you've never tuned in here before, we cover West Tennessee, North Mississippi, Eastern Arkansas with Memphis, Tennessee, right smack in the middle there in Shelby County. So welcome to the show. Any other questions, give me a shout by email at austin.onic at wreg.com. And, of course, if you can't stick around for the whole forecast, we do about 10, 15, 20 minutes of weather here. A lot more than we can do in a regular newscast. So, again, if you've got any questions about the forecast, scrolling in the blue bar beneath you here, if you'd like to check that out, or go to this website at wreg.com slash weather, and you can find out more about our 7- to 10-day forecast, a lot more about Skywarn meetings that are coming up pretty soon, and, of course, our podcast called Emotional Terror Tornado Alert, which is available for you to listen to or download at any point in time on Spotify, iTunes, and, of course, at WREG.com. Pretty active day yesterday. We're still tallying storm reports out there. If you've got those, please send those to the National Weather Service so they can study what happened. Your information could help future severe weather studies and help us plot out more about what goes on when we're expecting severe weather. So your information makes a difference, and definitely want to help out with that if you can. We'll talk more about the forecast into the next several days coming up in just a little bit. Right now, our forecast for this morning and into this afternoon. At this time yesterday, we were about the upper 60s to lower 70s. We are right now much cooler than that, about 25 degrees cooler, in fact, across much of the area. If you're that chilly this morning, if you're in the 40s or even in the 30s, drop those comments into the uh, section down below. Uh, tell us where you're from, city, state. If you've got any weather information out there, wind direction, wind speed, what's in your rain gauge, anything like that. And if you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see those too. Uh, won't be featuring them right now because we've only gotten a couple of them. We're still processing them, but we'll get more information about that coming up later on. So uh, if you got weather pictures, please send them along to me, tweet them to me, or again, email them to me as well, and let us know what's going on in your neck of the woods. Drop those weather reports into the comments section, and we'll read some of those off after we go on through the rest of the morning. Currently, <clears throat> excuse me, in our nation's capital, we've got mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of a sunrise this morning, a little bit on the cooler side right now uh, around the airport area, 66 degrees, winds out of the southwest. They're on the other side of that cold front from that big storm system that's rolling on through the Great Lakes. So we're on the cooler side, winds out of the northwest, D.C. and the Chesapeake Bay, Potomac River area. That's where we're seeing some temperatures a lot milder right now. So they're on that other side of the cold front for this morning. Here in the Mid-South, we've got clearing skies, a few clouds, the quad from the Ole Miss campus, a lot of sunlight out there as the sun comes up over the horizon and gets things a little brighter. Rhodes College in Memphis, we do have a few clouds out there, but some nice sunny skies coming on through, or at least some nice sunlight anyway. We'll be seeing some more blue skies later on after we get rid of some of the cloud cover out there. So again, we uh, see again some pretty chilly conditions for right now. Uh, like Stephen Petty, 45 degrees. 45, okay, if I'm reading that correctly, two-point typeface and bifocals don't work. Uh, Cleveland, Mississippi, thank you, Mr. Stephen, uh, for that one. Thanks for tuning in from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Elizabeth Hawkins. Thanks for tuning in there. And everybody else who's checking in from all over the Mid-South and points beyond, thanks for tuning in. Shelby Farms Park, expecting this to be a little bit more busy into tomorrow. Hyde Lake and the pathways around the area, not too busy for this morning. A bit brisk out there. You may notice, again, the trees kind of wobbling back and forth with that wind coming in out of the northwest. So we are seeing some pretty breezy, not exactly brutally cold, but it's a lot different than what it was about 24 hours ago. So something to think about there. Traffic at the height of rush hour, heavy but moving along well at I-240 and Poplar for this morning. So from our Hilton East Memphis camera, not any problems with visibilities. And looking off to the southwest, not that much in the way of cloud cover for right now. You might have heard about this over the last several days and weeks as these systems come on through. A bomb cyclone is just a cyclone, a big storm system. This whole thing is the cyclone. It's the biggest storm you can have on the planet. Again, this is what we usually see 
rolling on through. Now, along these things, around the cold front, the warm front, we can get severe weather. Where the colder weather is, we can get winter weather out there. They're primarily a winter thing, but the nickname bomb, a lot of people over the last few years have come out to say that the polar vortex was just invented to scare people. Not the case. Polar vortexes have been studied for the last 40 to 50 to 60 years. Likewise, bomb cyclones are these cyclones that drop a great deal of pressure and get very deep in the atmosphere, very strong, very heavy amounts of winds flowing around this thing, trying to fill up the gap in the atmosphere. So this is a nickname that was chosen by some students and some professors a long time ago studying these storm systems. If you have a chance to look up, again, uh, Fred Sanders and John Guyacum, they're some of the ones that did some of the greatest research on this. And again, something to take a look at if you've never seen this before. But this is what is responsible for our weather across the Mid-South. Right now on Storm Tracker 3S radar, we are hard-pressed to find anything in the way of any precipitation. That's all moved off to the east or down to the south. So if you're heading towards, say, Jackson, Mississippi, New Orleans, east of Knoxville into the D.C. area, you may wind up with some showers and maybe some thunderstorms there. Cool in the Mid-South this morning, cooler than what we saw Yesterday, we're back in the lower 40s across much of the area. Very healthy northwesterly wind out there at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Breezy today, not enough for a wind advisory, but these winds are taking these temperatures down for wind chill purposes into the 30s. So if you're heading out the door pretty soon, you may want to think about bundling up a little bit more because if you haven't been outdoors since, say, yesterday afternoon, it's a lot different on the temperatures out there, very much on the chilly side for right now. Cherica, no love, Trawick, a little cool in Fraser. Thank you very much for that weather report right there. Rick and Angie Massengill, thank you very much for the very kind words. Do appreciate that. Uh, likewise, Janice Walker watching from Oxford, Mississippi for this morning. And Willie Standback, 45 degrees from the North Haven area. Thanks for stopping on by there. Rest of the morning into this afternoon, lower 50s and those winds coming in from out of the west northwest. So that's off the plain states. That's very dry air coming on through. Now, the gray colors you see up here, we may see again the occasional bit of clouds drifting on through the area, but we're not picking up much of anything in the way of total cloud cover out there. So it'll be partly cloudy at times, mostly sunny at others, and looking at some nicer conditions for today. Cooler but nicer and more importantly, very dry. Temperatures around dinner time in the mid to upper 50s. News Channel 3 at 10 and just afterwards, upper 30s to lower 40s. And by daybreak tomorrow, a little chilly out there north of I-40. Some temperatures back in the lower to mid 30s. So looking at some pretty chilly conditions out there for right now. Over the next several days, keep an eye on this area right here on these blue boxes, the precipitation percentage. It's going to be a lot different than what we've seen over the last couple of days. There's no question about that. So right now in the Mid-South area, we are seeing, again, the possibility of high temperatures going back into the mid-50s. That's below normal and way below where we were about 24 hours ago. Temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s at this time and looking again at some very mild conditions into tomorrow as well. St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. Temperatures, this forecast a lot different than what we saw about a week ago. Colder, rainier conditions, and again, looking at much nicer into around the area for right now. Thank you very much for dropping that off. Denise Gouin, our audio operator, heading out, <laughs> dropping off breakfast for this morning, so thank you very much for that. St. Patrick's Day looking very nice, and again, if you have any outdoor plans, a jacket would be a good idea. Make it a green one, again, just to make certain that you don't get pinched on there. We're looking at the end of one season and heading into another. The last day of winter is this Tuesday. That'll be temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. Spring starts right before 6 o'clock Wednesday evening, and temperatures will be just below normal, but we'll be looking again at dry conditions out there. Again, notice the precipitation chances, goose eggs across the board. Absolutely nothing expected for the next week or so where it comes to rainfall, and you have no idea how great it feels to be able to tell you about that after all the sogginess we've seen around the area. Hopefully, again, the rivers and creeks and streams will also be draining away quite nicely as the soils dry out. We'll bring you updates on those coming up a little bit later on. Extended forecast as we go into the next several days. Next best chance of rainfall is going to be several days out. and We're talking like next weekend, the first weekend of spring, lower 70s, partly to mostly cloudy skies, and maybe a chance of some scattered showers late next Saturday 
into early next Sunday. But that right now is all we've got. Now, again, this is still 10 days out, so a lot of this over here, nowhere carved in stone. So, again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised as to what we're looking at here and the changes taking place. But, again, very mild temperatures below normal for the next several days. We won't get back close to normal until next Friday and then just above normal as we go toward next weekend. And once again, dry across the area with little, if anything, showing up in the way of any precipitation out there. Very nice to tell people about. A little chilly at times, 30s and 40s will be sticking around throughout the rest of next week. So a bit brisk in the morning as the kids head back to school if they have spring break this week. If they don't, going back to school could be a bit brisk, but otherwise not too much to worry about there. Now, yesterday's severe weather, you may have never gone through that type of thing before. If you haven't and you would like to know more, the National Weather Service is offering free courses to help you get ready for severe weather. They're called Skywarn, and if you've never had a chance to take these courses before, they're all over the Mid-South for the next couple of weeks. These are the next four that will be coming up, including one in Alamo, Tennessee, That'll be tomorrow morning, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Full address will be, again, at the National Weather Service website here. Next one after that will be in Tupelo on Monday at 6.30 p.m. And two of these coming up in Tunica, Mississippi, one at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the other one at 6.30. Now, again, these are just the times and the city-state information. If you'd like to know the exact address of where these things are, weather.gov slash MEG. These meetings last about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how many questions there are. The meteorologists and other personnel from the National Weather Service teach these meetings in the hope of training citizens to know what to look for and, more importantly, what to call back to the National Weather Service to say, this is John or Jane Smith from Collierville. I just saw a rotating wall cloud, baseball-sized hail, wind damage, uh, with winds estimated 60 miles per hour. The National Weather Service can use your information on that and say if the storm is here right now and it's moving this quickly, then in this area right here, again, where that polygon comes into play, these are the people here that might be affected by that storm. Your information that helps the National Weather Service tell everybody else what's going on, including yours truly here at News Channel 3, your information could help save lives. And if you would like to become a volunteer, please consider attending one of these meetings. If you have not had a chance to be there before, that's great. Again, you can go for the first time. No reason to feel self-conscious. Ask questions. Learn more about the atmosphere, radar, what to look for before, during, and after storms come on through. And the one for Memphis and Shelby County is coming, just not on this list here just yet. The full list available here at weather.gov slash MEG. The more people we have trained on spotters, the better off we all are because your information, keeping an eye on things, can help save lives. Radar is great. It can tell where a tornado might be forming, but what we need are eyes and ears on the ground to look and see what's happening and to confirm what's going on to give us information from the National Weather Service. That's what we need more of more than anything else. So please consider being a volunteer spotter. Meetings will be coming up pretty soon. And again, if you got any weather pictures out there, we'd love to see them. Email them to me or drop them to my social media pages. We don't have much to show you right now. Still tallying a lot from yesterday, so stay tuned for more on that. All right, one more check in the forecast. Again, through the rest of the day, temperatures below normal. Plenty of sunshine right now, but looking again at some cooler conditions into tomorrow morning, mid to upper 30s to lower 40s. And again, mild, but nowhere near as mild as yesterday. Temperatures back in the lower to mid 50s. Coming up at 8:45, we'll take a, or at 10:45 this morning, we'll take a look at weather where the troops are. That'll be on my Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter pages. We'll also take a look into the into the weekend forecast. That'll all be coming up here in the next about a couple of hours. And of course, we've got tons more on News Channel 3 live at 9. Again, give you more information on weather there. I'll have the forecast on News Channel 3 at noon. Tim Simpson is in for the vacationing Jim Jaggers, which is he's turning up in all sorts of interesting places. If you've never had a chance to see what Jim does on vacation, follow his Twitter feed to find out more. And, of course, I'll have more details on your Into the Weekend forecast coming up tomorrow morning, bright and early on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3. Stay safe throughout the rest of the weekend. And, again, stay tuned for more details with your forecast live and direct from downtown Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of Friday and into the weekend. And thanks for joining us on Weather Overtime.